not a typical video on my channel guys but i've been very excited to film this one because i'm a huge fan of spending good quality time with your spouse and especially if it's cheap free uh, or you know just you can have great time no matter where you go what you're doing right now i have 50 maybe even more uh, date ideas or like couple activities ideas to brighten up <laughs> the everyday life. Different ideas will uh, work for different people. You might not like some of them, you might like others. So just pay attention to these ones that might seem fun for you. It's all about just spending good time. You know, it's not about making it perfect. It's all about experience. It's about your attitude, how fun you want it to be. And also, um, Pay attention to what your partner likes because some people might not find these activities good for a date or for spending time together. Some people prefer a more fancy style of dates and it's not bad or it's not good. It's just different preferences. But if you're like me and just want to spend great time together, then here are my ideas for you. The first idea is obviously going to the cafe, the basic one, everybody knows about it. And I wanted to give here some advice on how to make it more affordable because I can't really say anything interesting about going to the cafe, but I can give some advice. So what we did with my husband a lot when we were dating, and we still do it now, uh, we would find good deals. Uh, I mean, a lot of cafes have great discounts for different time of the day. Let's say some cafes have morning discount, uh, some cafes have different uh, evening discounts. Uh, some cafes have like uh, combos um, that are cheaper, let's say lunch combos where you can come and you can have a drink and a meal, uh, like two of them for a cheaper price. Also, uh, what we do quite often, we would bring our own water or tea with us. Most cafes don't mind if you bring like a bottle of water or a thermos with you because let's say I order tea or water anyway in any cafe. So if I didn't want anything fancy, we were just taking our water or tea from home and we were not ordering any drinks and it was saving like this, like the extra third meal amount of money because usually drinks are also quite costly in all the cafes and restaurants. In some cafes that we like the most, we know which meal is like the really big one. Some cafes have very big uh, meals, like certain meals. And sometimes we would order only this meal and just split it. <laughs> that worked for us a lot of times too. If all of that makes sense to you and make it more fun and not you know, upsetting because some people upset when they have to, uh, you know, bring their own drinks or split the meal, like it makes them upset that they can't afford something. But for some people it's, it's fun. So for me, it's fun. <laughs> Next date idea is anything car related, the date in the car. You can take some food with you and drive to the nice uh, spot in the, your city, maybe with a nice view and just sit in your car and drink and chat in the comfort of your own like private space. It's warm enough. Since we got the car, we've had a couple of dates like that. And especially when we had friends uh, staying with us, we had several dates just in the car, my husband would uh, put down the back seats and make uh, like like a sofa place. So we would just uh, sit there, watch a movie and eat drinks in our kind of private space because we didn't want to be at home at that moment with a lot of other people, like the home was a little bit more crowded than we would want it to be. And children were sleeping in our room, so we wanted to just be by ourselves and talk and eat. And it worked for us really, really well. Taking food from home, maybe sandwiches, maybe something you prepared, and going to the picnic anywhere you want. You can go to some city location, you can go to the nature, to the park. We were doing a lot of breakfasts in the park kind of picnic, uh, just taking on a little blanket and sit in the park in the summer. Uh, and eat there. On a car also we were going, like in one of my vlogs you saw that we would park and just sit in our like backspace, uh, open it and have a nice view and just sit there, uh, look at the view and kind of be in nature but also have a nice place to sit and eat. Picnics are great, I love them. Barbecue outdoors, so again I don't know where you live and what the restrictions are there but here you can basically park in most places 
like outdoors in any forest, in any like, let's say forest field <laughs> and have a barbecue there. You can bring your own like barbecue place or you can make a little fire place there and just uh, fry some sausages. Um, yeah, and make some hot dogs and just eat outdoors with the food made on the fire and it might be really, really nice. But be sure obviously that you kept everything clean, take all of your stuff with your back, clean the fireplace, water it, and like, yeah. So that might be dangerous a little bit, but that's fun. We've been doing that a lot in spring and summer uh, with our friends. We we're going to some nice spots and we're just making little fireplaces here and there and just make some sausages and that was really, really fun. Next one is cooking together, literally anything. You can cook a dinner together, you can cook a special meal together that might be more, you know, like a date. You can decide to make a cake together or you can decide to cook something from a movie that you like. Maybe there is some certain food in that movie and you want to try to make it at home. Or you can try to make some desserts, maybe some cookies or, you know, now it's Christmas time. You can make cookies together. You can make gingerbreads together or all of these gingerbread houses together. Free or cheap master classes, poetry, drawing, sewing, making jewelry, uh, crafting something. There are a lot of things like that in most cities, especially in big ones. Some of them are not really free. I think most of them are not free, but they are usually quite cheap if it's not, uh, you know, some kind of a very famous professional doing them. Quite often, there are just people who know how to do it and they want to organize events like that, earn a little bit of money, and it might be very fun and cool. You'll spend great time together, like making postcards. Just, just look for events like that in your city. Um, they're usually quite affordable. There are a lot of free or cheap events, let's say maybe music festivals, uh, or somebody's playing music uh, on the street or in a cafe, like live music. It might be very fun to go and listen to it. Uh, people are doing uh, like reading poems, doing some kind of performances, swap parties, exhibition in some local galleries. I mean, most of the time, if it's not a fancy side place, if it's not like Hermitage, uh, then probably it would not be expensive. In every city we live in, I subscribe to different uh, profiles on Instagram that post information about these kinds of events, like really fun, affordable events. Um, and in every city we've been living in, there were some kind of things like that, and I've always have like notifications about them. I check uh, what what's happening on weekends. They usually make like a list of things that where you can go on weekends and have just a great time together. Right now it's Christmas time and there are a lot of fairies in most cities going on. And you can go there and just walk around there and see what people are selling, what they're doing there. It's, it's fun. Cinema, obviously one of the top favorite. <laughs> Everybody goes to the cinema for a date, but Again, uh, as well as with cafes, I can uh, give some ideas how to make it a little bit more affordable. First day the movie is announced, everybody goes, everybody wants to see it. It's quite crowded and it's quite pricey usually. Then it becomes cheaper and cheaper and cheaper a little bit usually. And we used to go to like a little bit later when it's not that crowded and the price is a little bit down. Nobody goes to the cinema on the work days in the morning. <laughs> So if you can do that, if you also have a flexible schedule, you can you can look for options like that. There were the cheapest, the cheapest uh, cinema tickets ever. I think they were like two dollars, and there was like almost nobody in the room, so it was very comfortable to just sit there and watch, and nobody was disturbing us. So in our country, most cinemas don't mind if you bring your own food there, especially if you are bringing like in a backpack and not you know, like right before their eyes, <laughs> you know, if it's not like real food, if it's not pelmini or McDonald's, uh, if it's just like chips or sweets with, with I don't know, with Coke, with uh, juice, um, then they usually don't mind, even if you bought it not in their store. So we would usually go to the nearest supermarket, buy everything we wanted, and then come to the cinema and it's like twice cheaper than in their store. So open cinemas like to, to watch in the car, 
to watch in the park. Uh, we've had them in some cities, not in all the cities we've lived in, but in some. In one city we were staying in, they were showing movies in the cafe, in the big cafe. They had a big screen and they were just constantly showing movies there. And it was really nice to come there and sit there, watch a movie, and then maybe discuss it a little bit with other customers of the cafe. So it was kind of fun. They show movies in kind of different atmosphere than in the cinema. I'm obsessed with local traveling, going to the nearest small towns, villages, cities, like two hour drive and you're in a completely different environment, you've never been there or like you rarely go there. And usually, you know, like people like to come to big places, big cities, famous places, but most of the time you can spend a really great time going to the small town as well. Just look for what is fun there. What interesting places do these little cities have? Because usually every city has at least something. Maybe a nice, beautiful nature spot, maybe interesting, weird museums, you know, uh, just some architecture and just walk around and see what they have and try to make it fun. Like it's, it's all in your head. It's about your attitude. It's how you're looking for adventures together. It's not really about the place. <laughs> Again, you can spend terrible time in a very fancy, famous place and a great time just going to the nearest like village. Volunteering anywhere you can, especially like charity organizations, they usually have a lot of volunteering options, but some other kinds of organization also can be looking for volunteers. And that's a very fun experience. You can have so many different options what to do. You can do it together and you can have great time. We've been seeing in one winery. They're not a charity organization, they're just a winery, but they had an option for volunteering. So you could come and stay in their place as a volunteer. They will feed you and they will provide you a place to sleep. And you can just work in their garden, work on the some construction stuff that was going on there. So I thought that it's kind of fun. Board games, you don't even have to buy board games. You can borrow them from a friend. Usually everybody has at least one friend who has some kind of board games. A lot of uh, board game stores actually organize playing uh, in their stores. You can come on certain days and play certain games in their stores. I had a lot of friends who were going to this event and they were playing there. Next idea is video games. Uh, like Xbox, PlayStation, they're really fun to play together, especially if you are like fighting against each other or trying to complete some kind of mission. And again, you don't have to own these things. You can borrow it from a friend if you have friends who would let you borrow stuff like that. Or uh, you can go to specific places who let you play for some amount of money. There are a lot of video games spots in the city usually, where you can just come and play games specifically on the computer or like Xbox, PlayStation, but also there are not obvious places sometimes. One time I was going with my friends to a cafe that where you pay for time you spend there, so it's not like a cafe cafe, it's just a, a place, like a co-working space, you can just um, lay down there and they have a little bit of tea and coffee but not much food and they had Xbox, PlayStation, GameCube, like literally anything you need and we were coming with my friends paying for a couple hours it was not a lot, it was just a little bit of money and we were playing like crazy in these video games it was really fun so it's not kind of an obvious place but these cozy co-working spots, cafes where you pay for a time sometimes have this option. Roof date. I have a friend who is obsessed with walking around uh, the roofs and looking at all the city. Uh, you can find where it's legal to get on the roof. You can organize like a picnic there or you can even make it fancy, like put a table there and chairs and set a little... I've ha I have a friend who made a uh, like proposal like that, the engagement proposal. He organized it very beautifully. There were a lot of lights and uh, a lot of like decorations he put all around that roof. Just a basic apartment store building roof. And he would put the tables there and make like a really fancy, beautiful date with a view on the city. But again, be careful. Roofs can be dangerous, <laughs> so be careful. And make sure that the place you are going to is legal to go to because 
some are not. Going to the nature, you can go to the park, you can go to the edge of the city, which is not usually obvious, but literally you can just drive to the edge of the city and there will be like fields and forests and you can walk there like it's a park. Literally any nature place, you can take some food, make a picnic there, you can take maybe some like badminton or a ball and play a little bit there. You can just have a nice walk there together with, with no rush, just walking, talking, enjoying time together, enjoying time with your spouse. Everything that comes to the water, uh, like going to the beach, swimming in the sea, uh, river, lake. You can go to aqua park together to like right now it's called sauna, banya. Uh, you can go to the swimming pool. They usually work in winter too. So everything for swimming. Skating. Uh, right now is a good season to go skating and usually it's quite affordable. A lot of cities have these big skate rings <laughs> roller skating you can also rent them and go roller skating in the special place or even um in somewhere in the park in the city some places have that in the summer it's fun to rent a bike in the park and just bike around the park on the bike for this season playing snowballs making snowmen just wait for the snow to come and go to the park or to your yard if you're living in the house and just have some fun. Then shooting. There are usually a lot of places where you can rent special kind of guns and shoot uh, and win a prize, let's say, for example, or just shoot, like try to learn how to shoot. We went with my husband to a place like that and it was really, really fun. Also, I like this spot in amusement parks. They usually have it, as I said, with prizes and it's usually very colorful and fun. You can just like shoot a little figures or like little bottles or little circles and just win something. Long city walks and having your favorite street food on the walk. So I like eat when I'm walking uh, because I like walking long distance. Like me and my husband will like walking 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, just around the city, on the streets, looking at buildings, looking at uh, different um, stores and just different stuff that is happening, looking for art, uh, street art. I have favorite spots in the city and I like to get my favorite street food while we were going and eat that food and just walk. If you're not a tourist in your place, you usually don't think about sightseeing, but try to imagine that you are a tourist and look for all the sites that are in your city, like all of them, not only like two, three main ones, but literally all of them and check what you haven't seen yet. And I'm sure there are places like that and go with your husband sightseeing in your own place, in your own city. Um, just experience it on a deeper level, learn some more places that are popular for tourists or just in general interesting. Museums often uh, have sales for different categories of people, for students, for retired people, uh, for children. So you can think about that if you are in any of the categories for the sale that can be nice but also many museums that are not the most popular ones usually have quite affordable not expensive tickets but also there are sometimes days in the year where they have free days you can come and see everything for free so usually it's like in many countries there is like one day like that uh, or in particular uh, museums they might have particular exhibitions that are free for visiting so think about that too, like museums can be very, very affordable. Next one might not work for everybody, it's environmental activities. So if you are conscious about the environment and if you uh, like to spend quality time together, you can go for different environmental activities. So uh, let's say picking up trash in the park or on the beach, uh, cleaning that area, uh, going there together. We had a, a lot of teams uh, in my in the previous city where we were living. We had a lot of teams that we were going on weekly basis and we could join them and go with them. It was fun. They were also having tea and cookies after that, like communicating with different people. Um, but you can go by yourself too. And that might be an interesting activity if you like that kind of things, if you are into that lifestyle. So that might work for you. Obviously, it would not work for everybody. Next one is also quite weird, but I find it a very fun one. 
picking up flowers, fruits, berries, mushroom, nuts, whatever is growing in your region, in your like territory, um, around you, in your city, in the forests or fields around. Um, so it might be kind of wild picking, but be sure you know what you are picking and what you're eating. So we, we are not going for a mushroom hunting because I have no idea how good mushrooms look. But we can go and pick some berries because I know that how like some berries look. Or we can go and pick just field flowers together. There are sometimes farms where you can come and pay a little bit of money and just pick yourself a food from their farm. Uh, my husband's relatives in America were doing it a lot with like strawberries uh, and some other kinds of uh, fruits. They just wanted to have fun time together. They were going to the field. There are a lot of kids. They're just picking uh, all of these berries and, and, and fruits and they pay a little bit of money for that because obviously they have to pay something, but not a lot because they're picking the berries themselves. Next one is gardening. For me, gardening is fun just like once or twice. I don't like gardening in general, but as a one-time activity or as doing something special that you've never done before, that is probably quite fun. And you can garden in your own yard, obviously, or in your like relative's yard together. Just, you know, flowers in the pots in your house. You can look for places where you can plant a tree and buy a little tree a tiny tree and plant it somewhere in the forest and take a mark where your tree is and visit it from time to time. That sounds really nice. Making home decor yourself, like crafting home decor, you don't have to buy fancy, all of this fancy Christmas stuff. You can make some of it at home if you like crafting. Uh, you can look for different like YouTube videos for crafting uh, different decorations and just make it together. Feeding birds or other animals. We live in the city, but we still have some options to feed uh, squirrels in the park, uh, with nuts, uh, feed pigeons or feed small birds, um, feed seagulls if we want to. You can feed ducks on the pond, but you need to make sure what these animals can eat and what is good for their health first to feed them. And also you can go to the pet shelter and ask them how you can feed the animals. Most pet shelters have specific food for specific animals, so you can just buy whatever you want and bring it. So, But you can ask them if, if you can bring something or if you should buy some specific food or if you should just pay them and feed with their food and have that experience of connecting with animals, feeding them. Next is amusement park. Obviously you can go to an amusement park, but it doesn't have to be you know, at Disneyland. Disneyland is crazy fun, but also a crazy expensive. So it can be your local amusement park and you can spend some nice time there as well. Doing puzzles together, modeling, or doing some kind of furniture renovations together. If you like just calm, um, slow, relaxing activities together, puzzles and making models together is going to be great. Then learning an interesting dance together. Uh, maybe even exotic dance. So you don't have to go to the dance classes for that, although dance classes are fun and you can find uh, like different affordable dance classes or maybe they have first day free dance classes and you can try for the first time. Uh, but also you can just turn on a YouTube video and try it at home. Find the dance that you're interested in and find how to dance it, how to learn how to dance it and try it. Going thrift shopping or going to swap parties or garage sales. So these ones I would love to do. I really like it. My husband is not really into thrift shopping and garage sales. Uh, so usually I go by myself, <laughs> but I would love to do that if my partner would like this activity. And you can, you can buy stuff there but if you don't really need anything, you can buy and resell that stuff on like Craigslist or eBay or uh, on different website that you have in your, uh, in your like city or country. Uh, so it doesn't have to be just a waste of money if you don't really need anything. It can be a nice experience if you need stuff, let's say you need clothes, you go thrifting together, but it also might be just fun activity to resell things. Spa day for your spouse. 
and usually when we say spa day we imagine something very very fancy and expensive with all the massages and just all of this you know spa um quite expensive thing but what i'm talking about is you can make a spa day for your spouse at home by yourself you can make them a nice bath you can uh, buy all this bath foam or maybe you even have it at home uh, some aroma oils you can pre uh, prepare a nice snack for them just organize everything put everything beautifully there maybe a little bit of music or their favorite show um, let them just chill in the bath maybe do the massage for them by yourself uh, do some kind of I don't know something for their hair face massage <laughs> just just you can be creative with that you can really make a full spa day for your spouse and you both will have a very nice um, time together going on a boat around the lake or river and I'm talking mostly about these little boat stations in parks usually uh like if it's a big park and there is a lake or a river usually like 99 percent of the time they have little boat stations there and quite often they are pretty affordable uh, for i don't know like half an hour uh just right around the lake and i've been doing that quite a lot with with different people like we were going with my dad and my brother we were just kind of having an adventure uh, we were going with my uh, husband for a more romantic type of experience if you like taking photos um you can do it in a fun way you can let's say uh, try to dress up in an interesting way. You can um, pretend that your spouse is paparazzi and he'll or she uh, will just go after you all day long and take photos of everything you do and in the evening you can see what, what how it turned out. Drawing together and let's say you can sit in front of each other and draw each other, that might be nice, uh, but if you don't like competitive uh, stuff because we're not trying to make you argue. Uh, you can draw together and again, to not argue, you can, you can close your eyes, you can draw just how it feels on the canvas, on the paper together, and then you can open your eyes and see how it turned out. Or you can ask a friend to teach you how to draw away a little bit of money to a friend and then have like a personal masterclass together and you can even draw on each other you can have a face painting and draw something really incredible on each other or you can use your makeup and draw something fun you can have stickers and stick them to each other playing hide and seek in your house especially if you have a big house that that can be fun you know the one when you are just running towards each other and trying to get each other but maybe with the closed eyes uh you know like in the sweet november movie when they were just running um after each other with the eyes closed but be careful be careful next one is that game you can play together i don't remember the english word but basically you have a word and you have to draw it and another person tries to guess what you are drawing so you can play that even uh, if it's just two of you or you can play some other kinds of simple games that uh, are like that sea fight game uh, just games with words when where you have to write down something you can look for different questionnaires and tests online for couples they usually have lists of very interesting questions that let you know each other more on a deeper level and you can you can get this uh, list and you can, let's say, go uh, to the cafe or just sit at home and go through these questions and really deeply discuss them, uh, get to know each other. There are a lot of about the childhood, you know, about the future dreams. Doing karaoke together, singing together, uh, you can go to a special place where you can sing like that. In many cafes, they allowed you to sing karaoke. But also, if you are more shy, and you don't want to really sing in public, you can do it at home. You can turn on YouTube video and just sing. Next one is challenges with awards. There are a lot of challenges on the internet. You can look for them and you can make even like a week of challenges for each other. And you can make a list of challenges you, can, you have to do and the awards and punishments that you can get. If you like pranks, 
you can do pranks like a prank week then do quests all around the house doing different tasks from one to another and make your uh, spouse or like your partner go from one place to another and read all of these tasks do them and finally they will get this award or you can go to a professional place they usually are quite scary they have a room and you have to get out of the room or otherwise like zombie will eat you but uh, to get out of the room you have a lot of tasks to do and things to solve so you can go there together if you're okay with stress <laughs> but they're usually quite pricey so that's why i was talking more about organizing something yourself many people have lego sets in their house that they don't use you can take these sets and you can build together whatever you want you can just use all your creativity and like fantasy and just build together something really cool out of these sets of lego you can borrow them from a friend if your friend has lego that uh, they don't use and that they don't really need maybe you have lego yourself i don't know you don't have to buy lego to do this stuff because i'm talking more about making something uh, creatively together not following the lego instructions next one is kind of controversial but i've seen several times that it can be very romantic so it's babysitting and uh, if you're a couple that uh, don't have kids yet but you have relatives who have little children or uh, maybe you have close friends that have little children you can ask if they want you to babysit their kids and your friends can go on a date themselves relax a little bit uh, spend some time without kids and you can try babysitting their kids take care of them together play with them just for a little bit of time let's say an hour or two we had friends living with us and i've seen that they had a very nice time just um uh, doing something with our kids like reading books to them uh trying to play with them for them it was really interesting and cute uh, because they don't have experience like that they don't have children they don't usually play for a long time with children but here they were interested in that kind of activity next one is decluttering together again i made this list for different people i love decluttering and i would love to do it with my spouse uh, my husband doesn't like decluttering so when he saw that uh, in my list he was like this is not fun but for me it is and you can literally declutter your whole house together and have fun during the process if you like decluttering i think we don't go to libraries that much nowadays but you can go together to a library and you can just walk around there look for interesting books and just share what you found there you can uh pick books for each other like let's say five interesting books for each other and then um, you'll have a task to read at least a couple of them each of you reading a play or a book together out loud and like taking roles next one is helping at organizing some kind of event maybe it's your friend's wedding and you can really take part in this wedding and help organize it help with different uh, tasks any kind of event if you know that it's going to be happening you can ask if they need help i've been on many weddings like that sometimes i was not even a friend of people who were getting married but i was helping at the wedding it was kind of hectic and a little bit stressful experience but in general it was really interesting I saw all the details of the wedding from the, from the backside, you know. I saw the first dance repetition, I saw how food was preparing. I really like that experience. I like going to weddings just by themselves, but even more than that, I like helping at the events like that. I'm not talking about weddings specifically, but just any kinds of events, especially if your friends are organizing it, you can ask if they need help and you can spend good time helping with the event probably the last one is writing a letter for each other it's quite romantic you can sit next to each other and really write a long beautiful romantic letter uh, let your spouse read it right away on you can keep it for uh for years you know just let's open it to at the five year anniversary or you can uh, keep it for the uh, hard times in your marriage these were all of the 
date ideas, couple activities, ideas that I have. And I was really glad to be able to share them with you guys. I hope you'll try at least one of them or maybe two of them. And let me know in the comments which ones you like the most, which ones you think you might try with your spouse. And if you have any extra ideas that I didn't mention here, also write down in the comments. So thank you a lot for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.